It is 7 o'clock. You know what that means. It's time to engage with you on matters that affect you, matters that affect your family, matters that affect your community. Tonight, will President Putin be arrested if he lands in this country? Lots of ifs in this question. One thing, though, is for certain, it's topical. Very good evening to you, South African, those watching around the world. My name is Blaine Herman, and this is It's Topical. Our digital audience with us tonight, good to see them. Uh, good to have them on the program, as always, and as I say every week. Uh, digital audience, please put up your virtual hand if you have any comments or questions, and I'll do my very best to get you on air. The Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. What is that all about, you ask? Well, according to a document on understanding the ICC, back in 1998, over 100 states adopted the statute in Rome, establishing this court. And it goes on to say that for the first time in the history of mankind, states decided to accept the jurisdiction of a permanent international criminal court for the prosecution of the perpetrators of the most serious crimes committed in the territories, their territories, and by their nationals, right? A word that forms part of the preamble stood out for me, conscious. The state's parties to the statute, conscious that all people are united by common bonds, their cultures pierced together in a shared heritage and concern that this delicate mosaic may be shattered at any time. It kind of makes sense, right? So what's the big deal? Why, why is there talk about pulling out of this? Is it a jurisdiction issue? We know that the court is limited to the most serious crimes of concern to the international community as a whole. Is the issue the equal and consistent application of international law? Possibly. Remember, Russia is not a member, right? Ukraine is not a member. Not even America is a member. But South Africa is. You will be forgiven if you thought otherwise. But a statement from the presidency sought to clarify this issue. South Africa is, however, considering a legislative amendment that would domesticate the Rome Statute so that it reflects all the articles of the Rome Statute. What does this mean in practical terms? We're going to break it down for you. That's part of the mission tonight, to help you understand what's at stake. Now, the court, as you know, has issued this warrant of arrest for Vladimir Putin in the context of the Ukraine situation. South Africa hosts the leaders of Brazil, Russia, India, China at the 15th BRICS summit in August. Now, here lies the conundrum we will discuss, which leads us to the question of the week. And with regards to South Africa clarifying that we're not withdrawing from the ICC, how do you think it should be handled. How do you think this country should handle the arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin if, if he lands in this country? Come, follow me. Let's get you context as always. Uh, lots of variables on the story, right? Uh, what, what forms part of the calculus uh, when considering to enforce an arrest warrant from the ICC? Send us your thoughts at its topical SABC perspective coming up. All right, let's give you a sense of what we know and why it matters. And for that, as always, we turn to the magic wall to give you context, right? About the International Criminal Court. It's a court that investigates and, where warranted, tries individuals charged with the gravest of crimes of concern to the international community. I mentioned that before. It's, we're talking about genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, and the crimes of aggression. It's known as a court of, of last resort, and it seeks to complement, not replace, national courts. Now, state parties to the ICC totals about 123 countries. Majority, as you can see, majority are from African states, 33. And you'll remember, as I said earlier, Russia and Ukraine are not part or state parties to the Rome Statute. 
What does it mean in terms of executing this arrest warrant? We will discuss. Also, let's talk about this. Uh, the warrant of arrest. Now, last month, the ICC issued this arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin. And according to the ICC, President Putin is allegedly responsible for the war crime of unlawful deportation of children and that of unlawful transfer of children from occupied areas of Ukraine to the Russian Federation. I want to give you some developments just this week. President Cyril Ramaphosa uh, signaled an intention to pull out of the ICC, but that subsequently the presidency released a statement saying that South Africa remains a participant in the International Criminal Court. You are now officially caught up. Context, important. Why it matters? Perspective coming up. Now, I want to take you to the streets of Gauteng, Braunfontein, in particular. It's where you get to have your voice on this program. The issues, the burning issues of the week. The arrest warrant for Vladimir Putin, as well as the ICC. This is what you had to say. If President Putin comes to South Africa, he will be coming at the invitation of President Ramaphosa. And we have a responsibility to make sure the guests are treated properly. From what I've read and seen, Putin is not really like a good person. He's more like a dictator. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but yeah. So to if we're talking about humanity, of course, he needs to be arrested. But I mean, he's Putin. He has the power. I don't think South Africa has like, the power to like arrest Putin. Do I think that Putin should be arrested? Absolutely. I think he should be held accountable for the horrible injustice to humanity. I don't think Putin has to be arrested. If they don't arrest him, it will mean South Africa is weak, especially as part of BRICS. So it's important to arrest all people who commit crime against humanity when they come here. If Vladimir Putin comes here, our law enforcement officers will arrest him and send him to the courts. I don't think arresting Putin will be easy because in South Africa we don't have the capacity to do that. I don't think I capacity buying a is South Africa. We should not let Putin come in South Africa because he'll cause a lot of problems for us. Russia should do that themselves. President Putin is more than welcome here, and no one is going to arrest President Putin. All right, that's your say with regards to what needs to take place if the president of Russia lands in this country. BRICS summit coming up. Would that happen? Let's discuss with the better minds. Uh, we have a number of guests to talk about this in studio. Mr. Obed Bapella, he's the ANC Deputy Chair of International Relations. Good to have you on the program, sir. Thank you, Thank you very much. much indeed for your time. Uh, we're also joined by Alan Windy, uh, Western Cape Premier. And we are to Zungula, I'm told, uh, is not joined us yet, but he will. And we also have Inzali Matebula, UJ International Relations Lecturer, as well as the important guests of the night, our digital audience. Good to have them on the program. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Babele, let's just start with you with regards to the state of play. South Africa is a signatory to the ICC, which means theoretically, if a warrant of arrest has been issued and the person lands in this country, they will need to be detained and hand back to the ICC. Do you see that happening here in South Africa? Well, we are a signatory indeed, and, uh, and we remain a signatory after rescinding the decision to pull out of the ICC, which was a decision taken in 2017. And then uh, in our 55th National Conference of the ANC, we rescinded that and said, we'll rather go for transformation and the reform of the ICC itself and at home will then have to then amend the Rome, the Rome Statute right. as in the Implementation Act of South Africa. So the Implementation Act, it's our control, is our own law. We just have to then go to Section 98 and Section 97 and amend it in line with what the UK did mm -hmm. and then also in line with the Hungary did, where they reserve the right to exempt uh, on various circumstances mm -hmm. that are threatening their national interest. They will not arrest anybody. As a result, Pinochet 
the dictator of uh, Chile, stayed in Britain and died in Britain with their warrant of arrest, and Britain never arrested him because of the statute, the way right. it was domesticated. And I think the domestication is the route that will then be going as the ANC and EC took a decision on. But would that happen in time ahead of the BRICS uh, conference? So which means, would that statute be ratified within the domestic... You, you talk about the domestication of, 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 uh, of the, Rome the Rome statute, right? Um, and so you saying that there's a possibility that Putin will be exempted from arrest. Well, if we amend it on time before the, the summit right. itself. Right, so that's the direction. So the, the ANC is advising government to amend this so that Putin won't be arrested when he arrives in South Africa. Definitely we are looking for that particular option. But there are other options that are available, right. which government through the deputy president who has been appointed to lead the interministerial committee they are also looking at the legal options okay. that are available and any of that uh, is able to be applied at the time will do so but south africa will never arrest uh, putin it's a declaration of war as already dmitry uh, medvedev said that any country that arrests putin you are declaring war on us and it's like when you say you go and arrest the president of U.S. No one will arrest mm. the president of U.S. Nowhere in the world will they ever be arrested. And, and Russia, China, and, and the U.S. are in the same caliber of the countries that you will not just any country arresting them. But obviously we respect the law and then we'll then have to look at the options available within the law. That that does not happen. Right. And, uh, and, and I think that is where we are. And unless you what unfolds between mm -hmm. now and before August. I want to bring in the Western Cape Premier, uh, Alan Windy. Control, do we have the, the Western Cape Premier on? Let's, let's, let's talk to him. There we go. Uh, Premier, good to have you on the program. Um, I hope that you heard what Mr. Bapela had to say. You uh, did say that if Vladimir, Vladimir Putin comes here, law enforcement will arrest him and send him to court. Practically, how do you see that unfolding? Practicality, practicalities, because that's what I'm really talking about here is exactly what Mr. Uh, uh, Bapella said, is that we are obliged to arrest anybody who is found uh, wanting at the international court. And they have already made that uh, ruling earlier this year, on the 17th of March, actually, that he is wanted for arrest. That's why he's not traveling at the moment. So I agree absolutely. Our current system at the moment where we stand with the ICC as one of the founding partners of the ICC. I mean, this was during uh, uh, Mandela's presidency. Um, you know, uh, 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 the, one, of the, one of the key drivers uh, behind putting together our support for the ICC was Dalla Omar, mm -hmm. because we understood exactly what atrocities against uh, society feels like. We, we've just come through it as a, as a, as a country, mm. and now we were a democracy able to sign uh, uh, as part of the Rome Statute. So that's the real basis of this position. We were also tested when al-Bashir came to mm. visit us, and then, of course, the courts in South Africa then were challenged with this, and uh, they came out uh, and ruled that we faltered then as a country. Mm -hmm. We should have arrested him, and we were obliged to arrest him. So we are obliged to, to arrest him. We had a president and a leading political party in our country flip-flopping as whether we were able to or not able to, or we were going to even abide by the ICC yeah. uh, 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 court order. Well, quite frankly, in the Western Cape, I believe in the rule of law. I believe in our, consti in our, in our constitution. And in this province, we would carry it through. Of course, but if there's no, would... well, if there's no political will from the national government, the leadership of the national government, how do you practically, uh, you know, see this unfolding in terms of the well, arrest, well, executing the arrest? Being, being a province. Yes, being a province. You've got a warrant. You have to actually then get that warrant localized. So, of course, that would be a big fight because you would have to yeah. get, um, you know, you know, the director general um, of the of the judicial uh, uh, processes to actually enable you mm. um, from a legal point of view. You would obviously have to in include the ICC. So the, the the nuts and bolts of getting it done are complex. Yeah. And of course, as as uh, has been said, um, you know, by, by Mr. Bapella that. You know, of course, it's a declaration of war. Mm. But we have 
an obligation in South Africa because we are a signatory to the statute, the right. Rome statute. We are part of the ICC. We cannot turn a blind eye to it. And if the national government is flip-flopping, we won't flip-flop in the Western Cape. What do you make of the consideration for the legal amendment uh, that would domesticate the Rome statute? So, of course, I mean, I, I, many countries have raised various issues about the ICC. Mm. Um, and there's, I've got no issue with raising, raising issues directly with the ICC. I've got no issues with dealing with any of these items within our own domesticated parliamentary uh, processes and legal processes. Because that was actually where the court case found in 2016, the high court found us that uh, we had government wanting to exit, but it has to be a parliamentary process. So mm -hmm. I've got no problem with that following due process uh, because we are constitutional. Uh, digital audience, hands up already. Lucky, what, what do you make of the conversation? Do you think uh, Vladimir Putin will be arrested anytime soon? Go ahead, now, honestly speaking, let us look at the direct. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Let us look at the directive um, of what happened when we arrested our very own president of South Africa, the president uh, Zuma. It was a disaster that happened when we found South Africans going out to looting. What then would happen if we then arrest a president from a different country where their own country failed to arrest a person? Don't you think that Russia has more power to come and attack South Africa when we are at our worst of operations? For example, we failed to control, or should we say, to put a clear direction of how we're going to handle people who are looting. Do you think we have the nuclear, or should we even say, mm. the resources that Russia has when it comes to, 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 to fight it? Because at this point, this is their precedent. We are arresting. This is their power, the, the person who is in power, right? And also, as what we, we, we know, South Africa in the IECC, ICC, mm -hmm. South Africa has the veto power. This is every country's power, they have the veto power to withdraw from a statement that have, they have made. And I, I still believe that we won't be able to arrest them because we don't even have the resources to contain them. Yeah, look, the ICC doesn't have a police force. They rely on member states to execute an arrest if it is issued. Uh, but you need some considerable political will from the leadership to do that. If there's not, it's going to be very difficult to do that. Uh, Evan, say, uh, have your say, and then Jabalani. Thank you very much. Um, let me greet your viewers at home. Um, arresting Putin will be uh, deliberately betraying our historical alliance, alliance with Russia. Russia was there for us during apartheid, provided army aid, provided our people with guns to fight the apartheid. And we should also consider that uh, uh, Russia is, 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 is existing on the far left, on the political spectrum, which does not agree with what DA uh, advocate. So it's an ideological thing that we need to consider too. So if they paint that Russia has committed crime, we also want reparations for slavery, torturing our people, selling our people and taking our people as dogs. They must pay reparation first mm. before they can paint Putin as a criminal. And then um, 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 them committing colonialism and imperialism it's a crime to on its own. They must be arrested first so that they can yeah. arrest they can arrest Putin. All right. Evan, thank you very much indeed. Let's hear from Jabalani. Uh, thank you so much um, for the platform and greetings to all the viewers and the uh, digital audiences. First of all, I'd like to begin by applauding the, 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 the ruling party for actually bringing up the motion that South Africa should quit the, the ICC because Coming to think of it, uh, the ICC was actually formed by Benjamin Franz, who was the investigator for, for, for the Nazi crimes. So basically, the ICC was formulated to serve the interest of the common rest. It's, it's not really um, to serve, to serve, to, to, to serve the, 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 the whole entire world. You know? Hence why they, they remained quiet when the USA, Barack Obama, former President Barack Obama, um, permitted NATO to assassinate uh, Muammar Gaddafi in Libya and also invade Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, murdering Osama bin Laden. 
mm. when he was trying to protect the minerals of his country. So South Africa should actually quit or remain oblivious to to the warrant of arrest from the ICC because it, it it's uh, it's actually neutral whenever the, these Commonwealth countries are actually mm. committing crimes, especially. Uh, to, to towards the Middle East or African countries. So Double we should also ignore it because, yes. All right, now we get your point. Um, I just want to bring in uh, real way to Zungula, ATM leader. Um, Jabalani is stating the neutrality issue. Um, new, being neutral versus the need to act because you form part of a global body. You signed up, you agreed to the terms as it currently stands. Of course, the amendments will go through uh, in due course. Uh, but I mean, what, what sort of repercussions would there be if a sitting head of state is arrested in another country? Look, it's very clear um, that would bring war to South Africa. War we are not ready for, and you know it would be devastating for the millions of South Africans. Look, if anyone cares about the plight of South Africans, he would not want to put South Africans in the positions of being, um, you know, of being in war with Russia. Because once South Africa gets to be in war with Russia, it is the poor, it is the marginalized, it is the ordinary men and women that will feel the pinch, that will feel the war against South Africans. Mm. Therefore, any logical step that should be taken now must be taken in light of what is in the best interest of South Africans. What is in the best interest of South Africans is for South Africa to actually leave the ICC so that the, those world superpowers can actually arrest each other whenever they feel that one has committed crime. Because anyway, those that ICC, it is not an objective institution that actually um, you know, carries out justice in terms of its mandate. It selectively targets African leaders or leaders that are not in line with the Western um, um, power bloc. Mm. So we as the ATM, we believe that South Africa must leave the ICC as a matter of agency that is the only way in which this situation can be um, salvaged. We, we don't need, um, you know, to complicate things about um, changing or trying to transform a, an institution that is um, that will never be um, be transformed by us. That ICC can only be transformed by the world superpowers because they are the ones who've got the power. Us as South Africans, we need to be realistic to say the best thing for us is to just leave. Uh, Mr. Windy, what about economic diplomacy. Um, South Africa and Russia have had strong ties, even it dates back to the liberation struggle. Um, but I was just looking at these uh, SARS uh, stats with regards to trade, and Russia doesn't even feature uh, in terms of the top five countries that we import or export to. Uh, having said that, given our urgent economic situation, uh, we need all the help we can get. Being part of BRICS helps. Um, but what do you think you can South Africa afford to sour our relationship with Russia economically? So uh, I think beforehand, I just want to maybe answer the question of, uh, you know, changing the ICC. I mm -hmm. think Dollar Omar would be turning in his grave right now because he was really key of part of saying, you know, how do we fix the planet? What do we need to do to bring about change? And I mean, the reason that uh, Putin and his children's commissioner wanted by the ICC is illegal abduction and deportation of children. I mean, what worse crime? It's just unbelievable. But park that aside and then looking at the change in the ICC. Africa is the biggest voting bloc in the ICC. Africa's got th uh, 32 nations, 33 nations. Um, we've got uh, 19 in the Asia Pacific, 18 in uh, mm. In uh, Western, uh, sorry, in Eastern Europe, 25 in Latin America, and 25 in uh, in Western Europe. So we're the biggest voting bloc. We could change anything we wanted in that ICC. So I really believe that uh, the founding fathers of what they were trying to do here is correct. Um, you know, it is, and I think specifically because of our lessons in South Africa, yeah. with you know, arrest without any process, killing, killing citizens, etc. You know real, real uh, uh, close history led to being a, a, a formation of what we need to create here, which is the RCC. But then but go back to the question, yeah. yeah. So, mm. Now, of course, from a trading point of view, mm. Russia is a very small 0.2%, mm. uh, not even 1% of our trade uh, uh, goes to Russia. So it's a very small economic partner. 
I agree what's being said here. It's got a long history of, uh, you know, helping South Africa in the fight against apartheid. And of course, you build relations through those kind of processes and over years. But that doesn't excuse. You can't say, well, because they're a major nuclear power, well, we're now going to stand back and not, uh, you know, adhere to what mm -hmm. we've agreed to in the IPC. Or because of our historic alliance, we're not going to. Surely the issue is, are they or aren't they? And are we part of that agreement? We are part of that agreement, so let's carry it through or change it. That, I believe, is the standpoint that we're dealing with. Here. Right. On the trade side, we are upsetting um, our other trading partners in this case because, of course, the 123 uh, countries are all saying that they will obviously carry out an arrest of Putin because they partner countries. Uh -huh. um, and right now, we've got a huge delegation over in the U.S. Um, who are busy engaging because now the U.S. are saying that there's a debate in the U.S. Parliament that's saying, is South Africa friend or foe? And uh, they're saying we need to exit you from our AGOA agreement, um, let alone our other major trading partners across the world. Of course, yep. one of them uh, would be China, which is 10 percent of our trade. Um, but 35 percent of our trade goes to Europe, UK and US. Yep. Um, you know, we're talking about jobs. That is actually what we should be focusing on. Look, I was just looking at the stats. China over 10 percent, the United States, 7 percent, Germany, Japan, Netherlands, all forms part of the top five. Uh, Mr. Papella, with regards to, you know, why did we join the ICC in the first place? Vuyo uh, Reto is asking for us to pull out entirely. Do you see that happening? Well, let me start by responding to Alan Winde mm -hmm. when he condemns, uh, obviously, Putin and whatever he's been alleged to have done. But he's quiet about what George Bush did together with Tony Blair mm. when they went to Iraq under the false uh, uh, accusation of weapons, uh, of, weapons mass of mass destruction, and they found none. And then the ICC is quiet. And I think it's us who must then say, uh, George Bush and Tony Blair must be inducted like they are doing if they want to be a body of respect. And what uh, Amnesty International also recently, in two weeks' time, said that the, the credibility of the court mm. is now threatened because of the biasness and inconsistency. If they want to push the law, they must push it for everybody. Uh, Putin is not a member, Russia is not a member, so they must also go for those uh, U.S. leaders. They know that they have been sanctioned already, uh, unilaterally, all of them, those who are the judges today. And then obviously U.S. has threatened that should any one of them be arrested, they will invade Hague and then take out any U.S. person there. What type of a body is that? And we, we are staying in because of the following reasons and why we rescind that. Probably South Africans do not know. We were approached by yeah. the Palestinians, we were approached by the Western Sahara, uh, Polisario, we are also approached by Venezuela, who also want to indict certain people who have committed a, a, a gruesome violation on human rights uh, in their own countries. And they want South Africa and other allies yeah. to stay in there so that we can lobby for them so that their cases, including uh, the issue of Palestine mm. and Israel. So that is why then we then said to resign and say we can abandon the cause of those struggles also. And then that is why. But obviously, the ultimatum element that if all else fails, mm. there will come a time where South Africa makes a final determination whether we stay yeah. or we don't stay. But for now, we are staying with the hope of uh, changing the, the, the Rome statutes. But in right. terms of the economic element, the Global South is organizing. I don't say the, 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 the trade with U.S. and the EU and, and the U.K. is not important. That is why we'll continuously send special envoys mm -hmm. uh, that are there now to say, understand us. We are not in the hall. Mm -hmm. We are not also condoning the hall. We are engaging Russia also to go for peace. And, 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 and then if you then arrest, you close the door to engage. And South Africa is, has been a peace broker. And you name a number of countries here mm. in Africa, DRC, Sri Lanka, Zimbabwe, Lesotho, uh, up to Britain mm. uh, with Northern Ireland, the Sinn Féin. We have been, and we want to continue with that, guided by the policies of the African National Congress from right. past years, what the Freedom Charter says that pursue all uh, conflicts through negotiations, not war. Yeah. So that is the stand of South Africa. So we are not here in the business of arresting, sure. but obviously there will be 
in the law, those that will give exemptions and those who do not give exemptions, because the obligations remain with us. But the amendment of the statutes is to do so. The, 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 yeah. the, the, but the South is organizing BRICS is coming, the de-dollarization yeah. is coming, and we cannot ignore the new uh, future that is on the rise by just stumbling as South Africa around the issues of trade. The issue is enforceability. And I wonder, with all the issues being raised here tonight, whether the scales tip towards just leaving this body, whether it's you know, beneficial to any country to be in, in this international body. We will discuss that with our international relations lecturer from UJ, Nzali Matebula, in a short while. We need to take a quick break. More next. All right, welcome back. So there's lots of variables with regards to the arrest of or potential arrest of Vladimir Putin, president of the Russian Federation, if he indeed comes to South Africa. You've heard the conversation here about the issues that people have with regards to the ICC in particular. But what sort of variables are we talking about? Let's get a clearer picture. Take a look at this insert. An ICC bombshell dropped against Russian President Vladimir Putin in March. The International Criminal Court has issued two warrants of arrest in the Ukraine situation for Vladimir Putin, President of the Russian Federation, for the alleged war crimes of deportation of children from Ukrainian occupied territories into the Russian Federation. It came on the backdrop of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, a move which has since divided global opinion, with South Africa maintaining a neutral stance. And while there's an ICC arrest warrant against Putin, there's also a 15th BRICS summit approaching in South Africa, which he's expected to be a part of. Now, the host country faces a dilemma. Because of the manner in which the ICC has been seen to be dealing with uh, uh, these types of problems, has been a reflection uh, on uh, what many people believe is an unfair treatment uh, and our view is that uh, we would like this matter of uh, unfair treatment to be properly discussed but in the meantime uh, the governing party has decided once again that there should be a pull out the south african government has since clarified it's still an icc member but whether or not Putin gets arrested in the country, consequences remain inevitable. So it may create a lot of problems for itself if it doesn't arrest and if it arrests. But also one question that arises is why should now the ICC wait for only when Putin is in South Africa but not be arrested anywhere else or even in his country? He needs to come to that court for the crime. But there are those who are willing to assist the ICC. So Wendy will not be in a position to have this warrant in his hands or to give it to a local magistrate because he, he cannot have the facilities in terms of that section 8, which is now specific that now this is the procedure that is to be followed and he cannot do that. It also seems that the Western Cape government will see red. And no one is going to arrest Putin. If needs be, we'll go and fetch Putin from the airport to his meeting. He will address, finish all his meetings, we'll take him back to the airport. The International Criminal Court dilemma has seen a lot of tongues wagging, especially amongst the South African and global citizens. Whilst political parties in South Africa are still debating on whether or not the Russian president Vladimir Putin will be arrested if he lands in the country for the BRICS summit that is due to happen this August, the country is still bound by the law to execute the arrest. For its topical, I am Kolane Ringane, SABC News Constitutional Court. All right, Kolani, thank you very much indeed. So let's bring in our analyst, Nzali Matebula from UJ, International Relations uh, Lecturer. So you heard what Kolani had to say. Currently, South Africa is bound theoretically uh, to execute or enforce this arrest, detain him and send him, uh, that is Vladimir Putin president, uh, to the Hague, to the ICC. But 
There is this amendment that is being pushed from South Africa to domesticate the Rome Statute. How do you see this playing out? If you can unmute, uh, Nzali. There you go. Good evening to everyone and the viewers at home. So um, I would just like to start by saying that this is not the first time that South Africa is in this dilemma of wanting to arrest a president. But then I do believe that it's high time that we get to look at ICC itself and international law as a discipline because it's very preferential and very mm -hmm. inspirational. So in terms of domesticating, but how that would that work? Because right now we are all acting on ensuring that we prevent the arrest from happening before it even happens because that would be a declaration of war. Mm. But then as I was going back to what I was saying about the preferences of international law, uh, take for example, the Chagos Island, the archipelago in Chagos, mm. where the UK and the USS have been occupying as their military base since um, independence was attained in Mauritius. But then uh, when the International Court of Justice just issued a nine binary opinion to those countries which can be rejected which can be repudiated mm. so then uh, it comes to it comes to the idea of or the the, the consensus of is international law fair mm. okay mm. because at the same time as we are as we're going towards pushing what the icc has to say we have another element of international law that says presidential immunity mm. whereby you can't be arrested as a president when you're in a foreign country and i do uh, agree with many of um the, the speakers here that say that why should he be arrested when he's here? So it's a mm. form of scapegoating because the first time when we had to take some consensus and take a stance on whether we stand with Russia or United States or the Western countries, it, it was a bit blurry. But then wow. now we are forced to take a stance. But then I do believe that our foreign policy is very important on this one. So mm. in terms of domesticating it, that would take time. That would take a long time. But then I do believe that we should go with anything that mm. aligns with our foreign policy at this point, because in issuing of the arrest or in executing the arrest, well, how would that work in South Africa's case? How can we justify our actions if we were to arrest? Mm. But as I said, that um, in not arresting would be condoning um, all crimes in the world but at the same time is it justified for us to arrest putin yeah really is Important it justified question. because there are many wars yeah. around africa why can't we intervene on those and zali thank you uh Vuyo, let's let's just bring you in uh from what Nzali was saying if if the uh amendment to domesticate the rome statute takes longer <clears throat> than expected could we find ourselves in a scenario where putin arrives in south africa interested parties take the matter to court and by the time the verdict is reached he's already gone is that plausible look Blaine, before we get there i think the biggest issue here is that we as south africa we need to set our own course and decide which international organizations mm. is it in our interest to be part of because you find that most of the time we're speaking about our membership in these international organizations, whereas there is no material value mm. that these international organizations are having on us as a country and us as a people. That is a first point of departure. The second point of departure, the weakness of this ruling party in terms of implementing even one of their own resolutions, because in 2017 already, they already decided they are going to leave or South Africa is going to leave the ICC. Now, with the BRICS summit coming up with a very, very important partner in, the, um, in President Putin, that should be enough for them to say we're going to Parliament as soon as tomorrow and, um, you know, submit a motion so that the, um, South Africa leaves the, 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 the ICC. It does not need to wait for the uncertainties of what should happen to the courts we approach and all of those things. What is required now is political leadership to avert any anxious people or any anxiety in terms of what will happen if Mr. Putin comes here. The only thing that will make sense to all South Africans right now, it is South Africa leaving the ICC and all other international organizations that do not serve us mm. as a country. That is the only logical step. All right, let's go to our digital audience. Uh, Srini, to you, then Rafilwe and Neo. If you can unmute, Srini. Go ahead. 
Uh, good evening, Glenn. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I think uh, to start with, uh, the other speakers have spoken about the ICC's double standards, and that uh, I think we, we cannot uh, uh, stand. The charge itself is that uh, Putin took children across international boundaries. Now, you know that the eastern four provinces uh, of Ukraine was occupied by Russia mm -hmm. and the boundary have been uh, redrawn. So technically, he didn't take those children across the international boundaries. Uh, he took them out of the war zone into a safe zone. So it, actually, that is not a crime. That's a humanitarian act. Mm. So basically, the ICC's charges are void, and, uh, and the Russians have said so. Mm. If that is believed, do you think he should go and then answer to that charge at the ICC refilwe? If a charge is is void, I mean, there's no charge to answer to, uh, Blaine. Mm. Sec uh, the, the other point, uh, I think Alan Windy has the illusions of grandeur, thinking that uh, he's going to arrest uh, a nuclear uh, power, uh, the leader of uh, a nuclear power. Uh, his actions endanger all our lives, all South Africans' lives. Actually, Alan yeah. Windy should be arrested. Before he, I... Yeah. He is, is actually endangering us because the Russians have made it very clear that uh, if you do this, you are declaring war on Russia. Now, if Alan Winter is a, made a unilateral decision to declare war on Russia, then we should arrest him and hand him over to whoever he's going to... We should charge him for treason. Mr. Windy, do you want to respond to that? <laughs> do they want to hand me over to the ICC? Uh, <laughs> no, we will prosecute you here. Okay, that's fine. But I, 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 stand, but I stand by my point that says we are obliged because that was what the last South African court ruled post the El Bashir visit, mm. and that's exactly what I stand by. We are obliged as a country. But I also want to say that listening to some of the other inputs, I really think it is critical in how we deal with this issue. Because we could exit the ICC because we want to remain uh, friends with Russia. Right. And that, that's, a country can take that, that decision. And then, of course, we are not bound. Because if you are, as the, the, the legal voice in the room was telling us, you know, we, we have to make those decisions and we have to then abide by, uh, abide by those decisions and then live with those decisions. Right. And I said right in the very beginning, our parliament can change these things. We can bring it back to Parliament. I do believe that it's not going to be as quick as everyone thinks it's going to be. It doesn't take that. Uh, 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 it takes longer to get it through Parliament. My real uh, position on this is that South Africa is going to be forced because we will be obliged uh, to arrest uh, anybody found uh, wanting at the criminal court. Yeah. I have a feeling, and what I read in the Sunday papers today, that there's going to be a virtual BRICS meeting, and I presume that's going to be the easy way out. But we need to, as a country, understand that the world looks at us and sees us, you know, as a trading partner, as a pl player on, in the global economy. And we've also got to bear that in mind. We have the highest youth unemployment rate in the world. We have the highest unemployment rate in the world. Our lights are not shining. Um, we've got some problems and we need to be able to fix these problems. Yeah. And uh, I promise you it's not going to help by making some decision on whether we should be in the ICC or not. Mm. We should rock, stick to our promises and our, and our agreements and make it clear. And the very easy thing to do here yeah. is to say to the president of Russia is to say, I think a virtual BRICS meeting will actually be the mm. solution. We want to be put into that position. And then, of course, it'll tell the world. And then we can start to fix those processes and have a discussion yeah. as a country because that's what we need to do. I wonder about the symbolism also of the, the warrant and, and what's the aim in terms of that? Um, is the aim to make sure that in the public opinion that you say that Vladimir Putin is an international pariah? Uh, you know that possibly countries are not going to arrest him and that is the aim. We will discuss that in a short or we need to take a quick break. More next.
Right, welcome back. I want to just go straight to Obed Bapela, who is the ANC Deputy Chair of International Relations. In terms of the letter of cooperation uh, from the International Criminal Court, has that been sent to South Africa? The ICC is obliged to send a letter to us. They have not sent a letter to South Africa as yet. Mm -hmm. And if the letter does come, the response obviously will be, according to the law, the Rome statutes, you must then get a waiver from the courts in Russia. Mm. And I doubt if they'll get any waiver uh, from any courts in, in Russia. But and therefore, was, yeah. the, the, the law ought to be implemented right. to the fullest. And I agree, it's a very complex environment. Right. And, uh, and, and, and it's also left to many interpretations because our, our Implementation Act uh, 97 is quiet about that. But in terms of the rules of yeah. the Rome Statute, they must get a waiver from any court in Russia to say, yes, arrest uh, Putin. Yeah. And so, it must be that third member uh, state that must give that right. waiver, no one else. So and also that waiver March. must go to the yeah. United Nations Security Council. Right. We are not members of the UN Security Council. Yeah. It costs five members. If one of them says no, uh, that falls apart. Uh, mm. They will never get anywhere in it. So, wonder, so the, those the, are the uh, options uh, that I yeah. spoke about. That why don't we'll you think that they sent entirety it. of the options? Right. Yeah. Why don't you think that letter hasn't been sent as yet? Because these, this was announced in March, isn't it? Well, we don't know. So that's why the government process led by the deputy president, uh, Paul Marshall, mm. they will then be pursuing uh, that particular issue. So right. uh, as and when they engage on it, they will then keep reporting to the nation. Let's take it to our uh, digital audience. Rafilwe, I have no opinion with regard to the symbolism of the warrant of arrest, but what do you make of it if countries have come out to say, uh, we're not going to follow in terms of exactly what you need. Um, so what is the purpose of the warrant? What, what do you make of that? Greetings and thank you for the opportunity again. Um, it's, it is no secret that a warrant of arrest has been sent out and it has to be followed but as south africa are we ready to arrest putin because with war with us south africa wanting war with russia it will actually be on on a bad side with us because we are still a developing country and we have not yet developed mm. we are still here we are about to lose a lot if we arrest putin yeah. and declare war up upon us Right. Um, we acknowledge that economically we are not benefiting as much as we are with other countries like USA in terms of experts. So I'm not saying that South mm. Africa should, I'm not saying that South, South Africa should arrest Putin because they are scared of war. Mm. But yes, it is true and it is there. Right, it's feel nothing that. I got your point. We've got like four minutes left Thank on the program. Let's get Neo. Oh, greetings to everyone in the studio and all the viewers at home. Um, I would like to say on the terms of significance of the arrest, if you look at, if you view this uh, in this, the manner that I view it, how is it that the ICC made its standings just before the, the summit itself? I mean, it's to test also the, the relationship, as they have stated, it's to test the relationship between the countries. And one of the speakers who talked about mm. the trade relations, if you look at BRICS, BRICS is growing heavily. BRICS economic relations between each other yep. growing heavily to the extent that you find your countries like Saudi Arabia mm. wanting to join the BRICS. So why is it that South Africa uh, would want to choose um, to follow the ICC and not stick to Russia in terms because of um, exports right. and imports. We all know this was taken through colonization. So one way or another it would be to revive back South Africans' meanings. Um, the, the Western Cape Premier has stated that they'll arrest um, Putin when he comes. Um, that's causing conflict within the country itself. Can you do that? That should be the question itself also. Because right. yeah. now it will be studied. Okay, uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry to push you there. Amile uh, Lamini? Go ahead, if you can unmute. Oh, good evening. I think there's a very special point here to consider that if we do arrest Putin, there is also a possibility we get expelled from BRICS. This also means that one of our biggest trade partners, which is China, we risk a lot of trade mm. that we do with 
So that is something that we need to take home. Also, we have we trade a lot with India. So what we, we really want to jeopardize these relationships. Right. Point made. Uh, Jeremiah, I think we're going to take you. OK, Go thanks. It, hello, thanks. Good evening. Yeah, I see that there's no longer time. Mm -hmm. uh, when we come into I'm um, basically on a resolution, what should we do in South Africa on this of arrest? The important thing is to to negotiation where the country can negotiate with the uh, Mr. Patton, uh, which is a uh, he must not come here in South Africa because mm -hmm. if he came here, we'll have a problem of uh, the, the 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 who to obey the court court mm -hmm. order. So in Tik, maybe he can send the representative from Russia yeah. or uh, it can be visually because if he's like that, okay, we cannot arrest him as a South Africa government or a. Uh, we have a court order. We will have consequence of that court order where we were yeah. supposed to obey because we are a member of uh, that uh, ICC. All right, Jeremiah, thank you very much indeed. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but thank you to all my guests uh, as well. Value added indeed. Thank you very much indeed, sir. All right, before we go, here's my take. There's definitely a need for institutions of global governance. The International Criminal Court has an important mandate. The gravest of crimes are within its sights. And here we're talking about crimes against humanity, war crimes, the crime of, of genocide. But only when law is applied consistently is it effective in dealing with those individuals who seek to harm. South Africa's messaging around its participation in the ICC needs a bit of work, you would agree. But I think the bigger issue is understood. The fair administration of international law should cut us all equally so that blood is not spilt in vain. And that's my take. If you missed anything, be sure to watch this episode of It's Topical on YouTube. Until next week, take care. Bye-bye.